for another beautiful day that God has created for us. Um, as we often pray in, the, in this church and when we're saying prayers, we thank Him for our first breath that we were able to take this morning. Um, as we are never guaranteed another day in this life. Amen. I um, want to welcome again all the guests that are here today that have come to visit with us. Yes. Uh, we hope that you guys are finding a blessing uh, in this in this church today. And, and uh, I know... I always say you, there's no way that you can walk through those doors right there and not feel love in this church. Amen. Um, because that's what it's about. It's about love. It's about teaching God's Word. Uh, it's about the fellowship. Um, we've just got a, uh, you know, a lot of people, we don't see it and take it granted, but we've got a special place here. Um, and, and God has placed us here to, to love His children and to get out and spread the Word of God and, and help those that are lost in the world today. Um, uh, praise God for that baptism we did last week. That was very exciting. Um, and uh, just just praise God for everything. I mean, everything that's going bad in this world today, God still got His hand of protection upon those of us who love Him. Um, we're going to be talking about Moses today, and and uh, you know when I see Moses' name or I say his name, I think, man, I love him. Uh, I can't wait to the day that I get to actually meet him. Um, man, was he had so much faith. And so much patience. I wished I had half of his patience. Right. Um, that's what I think when I study the study. Just the patience that he had. And even when people were doing the wrong thing right there before his eyes. Or, and, and, and he would love them and pray for them anyway. And sometimes that's hard, hard to do. But he set so many examples in the Bible. Man, it's just fantastic. Um, so just to kind of catch you up. Um, I actually had done... Uh, chapter 11, I knew I was going to get these notes messed up, uh, but we, uh, we did chapter 11 last week, or no, the last time that I preached up here, I'm sorry, um, but anyway, so basically, just to kind of catch you up, you know, the, the children of God, now don't just think about this, there's 1.2 million of them at this time, and here you have Moses trying to, now could you imagine I mean, with what little bit we got in this church, what little bit of people you work with, all the murmuring and the complaining and the and the talking and all these kind of different things, could you imagine 1.2 million approximately is how many were there at that time? And I don't know how he did it. I mean, he, he, was, he was patient. He always prayed for them, even though they were messing up and backsliding and backsliding. And it's just absolutely amazing. Could you imagine 1.2 million people having to deal with their problems and listen to their gripes and they're murmuring? And they complained and they murmured. I mean, first it was that they wanted water. So, so he went to God and God gave them water. Then the next thing they wanted to complain about was because they had no meat to eat. I mean, they had the manna of God, Amen. which is angels' food, which they had to do absolutely nothing for to feed them and they rejected it. So the spiritual thing I want you to understand about that is the manna that God is giving us today is the Holy Word of God. Amen. And how many people are rejecting it today? They don't want anything to do with it. They don't want to hear about it. They're going against the laws and the commandments of God. They're doing self-gratification. Hey, what feels good, let's do it. And anything goes. Did y'all hear that echo? Yeah. <laughs> it happens a lot. I'm surprised you didn't notice it. Well, I know I'm loud, but, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah, that just kind of rung in my ears there. Uh, and, and, and in today's world, I mean, just anything goes. You know, if it, if it feels right, let's do it, whether, whether God approves of it or not. So then they started complaining about because they didn't have no meat. So if you read back in that chapter... You know, they finally, they made God angry. And of course, you know, Moses went to them and he's like, Father, you know, they, now they want meat. So what did he do? He sent, he sent quail into the camp. But he's got a little bit of a sarcasm in what he did there because he gave them so much, they ate so much meat, it was coming out their nostrils. Because he finally got angry about their murmuring and complaining. Now, I ain't going to stand up here and lie to you. I murmur and complain too sometimes. I'm tired and I don't want to do this and I fuss about that. You, you know, but... It, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, she knows it because she gets the brunt of you know my complaining, and, that, and you know she's a good good guy. Um, I often ask, is it a sin to complain and murmur against God? My opinion is, yeah, I think it is. Why? Because we are doubting the promises of God. Amen. You're not appreciating what it is that God has done for you and what God has gave you when you murmur against God. That's right. Now, each and every day when I get up and I, and I say it, it might be a repetitive prayer, but I can't help it. I thank God. I mean, I thank God. I, you know, I walk in my house and I got a beautiful home. I say, thank God. I thank God for my house. I thank God for the clothes on my back. I thank God for the people that work for me because I love them and they're my brothers. I thank God for this church, my children, my grandchildren. You should be thanking God for everything that you are and everything that you have and we have no room to, that we should be complaining to God because if it wasn't for God, none of us would be here. Amen. I mean, I ain't got the patience of, of Moses and I can't imagine the patience of God with like 12 billion people. But I mean, it'd be like an ant farm going wrong. I think I'd just scratch the whole project and it'd be done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he won't be take his place. <laughs> but you know what? He loves us. He does. Oh, I mean, I, I don't know how he does it, but he does. He loves us and we continue to fall short and we continue to sin. But God loves us anyway. And Moses... Each and every time, man, I mean, he was the greatest intercessor other than, than Samuel that would intercede and pray for his brothers and sisters. Now, how much better would the world be today if we were more disciplined to be praying for our brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. even those that do us wrong? And that's a hard thing to do, but you've got to look at them and thank God, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Is that not what Christ said? That's right. He's hanging on that cross and He looks up to the Father and the people that have stabbed Him, spit upon Him, beat Him, and He says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Mm. Wow! That's how much God loves us. So anyway, so the, you know, all the different miracles He did, I, and my favorite part of Moses of all of it is watching that old movie Charleston Hester's in, and he's standing up there and he's got that staff and he's holding it up and parts Red Sea. Man, after seeing that, you wouldn't have said, oh, you wouldn't have done nothing else for me. That's so. I'm so. I mean, they walked through there and they had dry feet. They didn't even get no mud on their feet for crying out loud. I'm like, how in the world can you lose faith in God and see that in person? But now we do see miracles today. Yes. I've seen God heal people. The doctors have said they ain't got the two months left to live, a month to live. Man, with God, nothing's impossible. He's still doing those miracles today. People just got their blinders on and they can't see those miracles. I see them each and every day. It's a miracle that sun is shining. That's right. It's a miracle when I see a bird out there just a singing and a carrying on. I, the biggest miracle for me is how a woman can grow a human child in her, in her belly. How fantastic is that? It amazes me each and every time I see a newborn. I'm like, wow. All right, so... I think that pretty much catches us up on uh, on chapter 11. All right, so we're going to pick it up. Chapter 12, verse 1. And it says, Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses. Now this is his brother and his sister. All right, it's, all, it's bad enough he's already dealing with the 1.2 million people and these two people are supposed to be there to help him and back him up. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had buried, for he had buried the Ethiopian woman. The problem is, if you're a student of God's Word and you research that, she was a Cushite, which means that she was a descendant of Noah who was the Adamic race that God saved on the ark. So he was well within his rights to marry this woman. And her name was Zipporah. You're going to find out in this chapter both of them are very jealous of Moses. And you know that's a tool of Satan. That's right. Jealousy is a tool of Satan. Being prideful is a tool of Satan. And that's exactly what's going to happen in this, in this chapter. 
And if you read, if you take this uh, word spake back into the Hebrew, it has a feminine verb. So it was Miriam that was leading the charge. It was her that was doing the complaining. But you had Aaron who followed along. And I can't help to think, and I know God had a great purpose for Aaron. He was a priest. He was anointed to God. But he was a follower sometimes. What did he do when Moses went up on the mountain to get the Ten Commandments? He helped them make a golden calf for crying out loud. So here Miriam is. She's gossiping and she's talking about behind his back because he married this woman and Aaron's just following right along. Let me ask you something. Are you going to follow somebody to hell? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy. God bless you. God bless you. I'm glad you said that because I get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's right. But some people are followers like that. They really are. They, you know, they love or care about somebody and their friend, but their friend is doing stuff that's dangerous or bad for them, whatever. And some people will blindly follow somebody to their death. Uh, so he was a bit of a follower. But anyway, so here you got Miriam, who God would even call a prophet. All right? And then you have Aaron who has been ordained and sanctified and anointed by God as the high priest. Alright, verse 2. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Question mark. Hath He not spoken also by us? Question mark. And the Lord heard it. They are claiming that their gift is just as important <laughs> as Moses'. And they did. You know, God gives everybody their own gift. Each and every one of you have a gift. And what are you supposed to do with that gift? You're supposed to use that gift to get out in the world and let the light of God shine through you and be that shining example for them. He gave you a gift so that we can help save those that are lost amen. in the world today. Can I get an amen? amen. Exodus 15, 20. He calls her a prophetess and Aaron is a high priest. Alright, verse 3. Now, you, what was the last part of that verse that said, God heard it? Right. Now, Moses is patient, and Moses is very, very forgiving, but God heard it. He got God's attention. Now, when you do something wrong and get God's attention, you're in trouble. <laughs> Amen. Verse 3, or verse 4. Three. No, three. It's 30, thank three. you. Three. Now, the man Moses was very meek. Man, that man was humble. Right. So very humble above all men which were upon the face of the earth. I mean, he was the lawgiver. He was patient. He was humble. He was an intercessor of prayer. But let me tell you something. Chapter 11, that brother has been pushed to his limits. He finally went to God and said, My goodness, Lord. He said, What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to take care of all these people? So what are you supposed to do? So what did God do? He got 70 people in, out of the tribe of the elders and He anointed them with the Holy Spirit to help them to minister to the people. Now what do you take from that? Well, when you need something, where do you go? You better be praying to God. That's who you need to go to. That's and right. And that's what He did. He sets example after example after example in this Bible. He was patient. He was meek. He prayed for his brothers and sisters and he went to God. Now he could have been like these two and just murmured and complained to God. What did it say? He was the most meek and humble man on earth. That's a lot of different people. 2.1 million. Alright, verse 4. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses. Uh-oh. And said, and said unto Aaron and Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out instantly. This is a place of judgment. Moses is willing to let this go, but God is not. God will come to your defense today. Now, I talk about this all the time. You know, Proverbs 8, 17, which is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Now, Moses is such a good man, and he's humble, and he's patient, and God loves him. So what does God do? He comes to his defense. Do you not think God won't come to your defense today? Now you got people out there that don't they don't they don't worship God, they don't read their Bibles, they don't pray, they don't care, they live their lives. 
like, like there is no other, nothing else after this life, what a sad place that is for people to do. But you know, a lot of people will do that and then the first time a tragedy hits, what do they do? Oh, God help me. And it's not really funny. You know, but he may hear it, but that doesn't mean he's going to answer that prayer. Right. But now when you seek God each and every day, and you get up each and every day and try to do what's right, I know none of you get up in the morning and say, well, I'm going to go sin today. This is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to go sin. I'm going to disappoint God, do you? No, we get up and we try to do what's right in the world. We fall short. We repent of our sins. But guess what? When you love the Lord, and you spend time with Him, and then somebody messes with you, that's like poking God in the eye. He will come to your defense. Amen. So, my guys always talk about when I'm talking to them at work, so they, these, these three just got called into the principal's office. Yeah. That's right. And I always say, now if God loves you enough to correct you, you better kiss the power. And they're fixing to be corrected for what they've done. They've got all puffed up, thinking that they're better than, that they ought to be in a position even higher than Moses, and that, that God ought to speak directly to them. <clears throat> Aren't we all given different gifts? Yes. <clears throat> Alright. Verse 5. And the Lord came down in the pillar of a cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle. Man, could you imagine the awesome presence of the Holy Spirit of God. And called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. Verse 6. And he said, Hear now my words. And this is God speaking. If there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision. And I will speak unto him in a dream. He's been a little sarcastic here by our father. Alright? Miriam is a prophetess and Aaron is a high priest. But guess what? He promised to speak to Moses face to face. Exodus 33, verse 11, And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, A man speaketh unto his friend. Now, that's awesome. When God considers you to be a friend. Amen. And talk to you and call you a friend. And that's what the Bible says when we do what we're supposed to be doing. God considers you to be a friend. You can't have a better best friend than God, folks. You can confide in Him, and He won't tell anybody else. Right. You can pray to Him and He will answer your prayer. Amen. Whatever's going on in your life, He's right there in your defense. Hallelujah. Amen. Alright, verse 7. My servant Moses is not so. Who is faithful in all mine house? Faithful is approved. God gave him His stamp of approval. And Lord, man, what that man put up with. I mean, he led them, with God working through them, led them out of Egypt, wandered around in the wilderness with them for 40 years. And what did they do? Oh, we'd have been better off if we just left us in Egypt. Why did God bring us out here to die? You talked about some murmuring and some complaining. That's exactly what they did the entire time. You know what the penalty was? None of the original 40 walked into the promised land. You know, people, sometimes we want to get ahead of God. And there's something going on, and you're praying to God about it, and, and you've not heard back for what He wants for you, and then what do we do? What do we do? We, we, we do it ourselves. We do it ourselves and then get ourselves in trouble. Now, if you're going to be persistent enough to pray to God for something and you don't hear back from Him uh, two or three times, you might want to think that you're not supposed to have whatever it is you're praying for. Amen. An unanswered prayer is an answered prayer sometimes. But what happens is, now, if you want to keep pestering Him, then He'll give it to you. And then what happens? It goes badly for you. And then what happens? Oh, God, why did you do this to me? Yep. It's just human nature. I mean, it's just pitiful, but it is just human nature. If we would commend our lives to God, if we went to God for each and every... Dis now, I'm not talking about praying to Him where you're supposed to park. You ain't got enough sense to know where to park and you're in trouble anyway. Go to God and you make sure you include Him in every decision that you make in your life. 
And man, you will avoid so much heartache and pain because God knows what's best for you and you pray for God's will in your life, then guess what? If it's not His will, you do not want it. Amen. Mm. All right, now I've definitely lost my place. Verse 8. Thank you. With Him will I speak mouth to mouth is what God is saying. Even apparently and not in dark speeches or similitude of the Lord shall be whole. Wherefore, then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? God considered him as a friend. I can't help but think about that song. We have a friend in Jesus. Amen. Amen. God speaks to people today. Is He speaking to you today? Well, I'm going to promise you something. Just like Cole was shared a little bit earlier, if you're spending time with God every day in the Word and in prayer, going to church, reading your Bibles, i got news for you. God's going to talk to you. Now, He spoke to Moses mouth to mouth. I mean, right to His face. How does He speak to you? He speaks, through, he speaks to me through the Holy Word of God is when God talks to me the most when I am studying this Word. But He also gives me numbers. I'm just sharing this stuff with you. Numbers. Numbers mean something in the Bible. And sometimes I might be down, sometimes I might be murmuring and complaining, I'm about wore down, don't want to go no more, and all of a sudden I'll see a triple one on the, on the gas station pump. I might see that number three times a day. That is God's affirmation to me. It's okay. You're going to be okay. God speaks to some people in dreams. He does speak to us today. You've just got to be in tune and you've got to be listening for that small, still voice. Amen. So basically, God is asking them, how can you be so bold to speak against my servant, Moses? Alright, verse 9. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them and he departed. If you put yourself as low as Christ, then you'll be exalted. That's right. But man, when you exalt yourself, you will be abased. That's right. Matthew 23, 12. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And that's exactly what he just did to these two. Alright? And he that humble himself shall be exalted. Alright, verse 10. And the cloud and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. Verse 11. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. You know what their sin was? They were being puffed up. They thought that they were better than them. They were questioning God's gift that He had gave them and saying that their gift was as good or better than Moses's. God is not going to put up with puff up egos. That's right. He does not like it. He does not... And people that get on ego trips, He will abase them. What did I say about today? And today we live in self-gratification. If it feels good, do it. That's not the way it's supposed to be. Alright, All right, verse 12. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed, when he cometh out of his mother's womb. The word leprosy actually means when you take it back to the prime, it means to be struck down. What did he do? He abased her. Now, Aaron didn't receive that same punishment because it was her that, that initiated the act. But he just followed along. So someone who had leprosy was seen as someone who was struck down by God. And then he compares it to being a, 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 being a stillborn child. Why? Because when a, when a child is born, stillborn, then the decomposition, decomposition is already started. And that's the way it was with leprosy. The body was decomposing. And he just put that on Miriam. All right, verse 13. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. Moses to the rescue, the great intercessor of prayer. That's right. They were causing problems for him, and they were complaining to him. And what did he do? Wow. 
He prayed for them. That's hard to do. I, I know it is. You know, when somebody's doing you wrong or doing, you know, that's, and you, you pray for them. But I tell you right now, that's one of the worst things you can do for your enemy. I know that don't sound right, but it's pray for them. Because when you let go and you let God handle what's going on and what somebody's done to you, I promise you, God can do a lot more to them than you can. Amen. So when you let go and you pray for that person, then God will deal with it. And it's an awesome, amazing thing to see. Alright. Uh, verse 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days, and after that let her be received again. Seven is spiritual completeness. And basically what he just said, this was an insult. This was a fitting punishment for what she did. Alright, verse 15. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days and the people journeyed not until Miriam was brought in again. Verse 16 to wrap it up. And afterwards the people were removed from Hazaroth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Everyone please.